Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Slightly Warped, uh, the strangest podcast that you'll love. And uh, I'm Rick, joined as always. Big Show, Show, how you doing, man? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing good, I can't complain, you know, except for this heat, and these gas prices. And yeah, well, you know, the last couple of days, I guess I, I can't pretty good. Yeah. It hasn't been too hot the last couple of days. You know what, though, I've discovered? We live in the Bermuda Triangle of rain. Every time <laughs> rain is in the forecast, it goes to a city to the left of us, a city to the right, but we don't get it. Or we might get sprinkled on for like all of five seconds. So, yeah, I'm not happy about that. Well, I forget. You're near Wichita, right? So yes. you're not in Kansas City. So, yeah, that makes a little bit of difference. It's yes. been raining here the last couple of days. Oh, man, I need to be there then. Now, we have caught in a few breaks with the temperatures staying below 100, but, you know, still want that rain. Right. And I guess I shouldn't really complain about gas either, because gas prices are finally starting to go down. They are. I've actually caught them under $4 a gallon, so I'm yeah. pretty ecstatic. Now, how long that lasts? I don't know, because I'm wondering, is, hey, this the, just... is this the new norm, or is this the calm before the storm? Because you know how they usually do it. It'll come down for a minute, and then it'll go up a little bit higher than it was before it came down. I'm just living and enjoying the moment. <laughs> and keeping that tank full. Yep. So, um, getting started with the show here, with a joyous list of topics today. I, I saw this one, and, you know, I just had to, uh, I had to laugh. Because there are people who still don't believe that we landed on the moon. And I guess I can see both sides of it, but um, one person's theory was you didn't see any stars. It was all black. So it's on the soundstage. Now, it's funny that you mentioned Star Wars, Marvel, and all that. When they do a uh, show in space, you see all the stars. Those are Hollywood stars, folks. Stars are so few and far between that when a little tiny spaceship is out there, you can look to the left and to the right. You might only see four or five stars. I mean, that's just the way it is. Now, I'm not going to sit here and argue, did we or didn't we? I am a believer that we did. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, we did. <laughs> I mean, that's all that other nonsense is, is this younger generation trying to be stupid. It's just, yeah, we did. They're oh. the same people that believe the world is still flat. Oh, we still got some of them? Oh, yeah. I just think it's funny because um, I know back in the late 60s, early 70s, there was a lot of people that didn't believe it. And, I, you know, I just looked at the um, article here and, you know, it talks about adjusting the camera settings. And, you know, if you take into account that those cameras that took those pictures are in uh, zero gravity, coldness of space, um, sometimes looking in the direct uh, line with the sun, so it's got to be, you know, heat and light sensitive, you're not going to see a whole lot. Um, it's just and the really other thing weird. is, what would be the point of faking the landing? Like, what what was the theory behind? Why did we have to fake it? Like, what was the purpose? Well, one person's theory was, hey, we're in the space race with the Soviet Union. They probably faked it so that they could keep up. Yeah. Okay, but that was that back way. then. That was 50, 60 years ago. I mean, speed up yeah. to today. They think we haven't landed on there since? I'm sure we have. I mean, we've got modern day photos. Just what this past summer, the beginning of the summer, didn't Bezos go up there in the space? And they showed Yeah, I mean, TV. but I don't know. I don't know if he landed on the moon. No, he, he didn't land on the moon, but obviously... Well, going to space ship, is different. That wasn't the question, did we go to space? The question was, did we land on the moon? Well, that's where I'm going with it, because it, if we've always had the technology to get into space, I'm pretty sure we had the technology to go far out 
to the moon. I mean, technically, I'm not sure because I don't have any data with me how far the moon is from here, but I'm pretty sure those rockets had enough fuel to get there and back. They, they wouldn't design something to go up that they knew couldn't come down. It's just well, and, and don't we have some sort of rover on Mars? Oh, uh, yes, we do. We've got uh, a lot of people don't I'm pretty know. sure if we made it to Mars, we made it past the moon. Yeah, there's a lot of deep space probes that we've sent out. I think we've sent one out to Jupiter. Um, we've sent one out farther than that every couple of months because it's that far out. Uh, images come back. So, yeah, obviously the moon is a lot closer to us than the next closest planet. But if, if we can get to the moon in one or two days, I'm pretty sure we can send a probe out and and that's the other thing that debunks their theory. When I brought up Bezos and um, I want to say, who are the other two guys? Branson and Elon Musk. They're all in their own personal race to get people to the moon um, and even farther out than that, civilians. And you know, if we've got a lot of civilian contracts trying to do all this, the military have already done it. Oh, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt. All right, <clears throat> guys, tell I us really you... think those types of conversations, i.e. landing on the moon, is the Earth flat, is Area 51 real, is just conversations to make people argue with each other. That's, that's pretty much what, all what I believe it is. I believe there's an Area 51. You're not going to find a little green man in it. It'll probably be samples of moon rocks and photos that people have taken, reports and things like that. I don't think you're going to well, I mean, find... There's obviously an Area 51. It's in Roswell, New Mexico. Everybody knows that. But what's inside it is what that, the conversation... That's what I'm saying. What, what's inside it. The, uh, right. As far as being top secret, it's just top secret because there's only one of each thing and the government doesn't want you to have access to it. Uh, they're I mean, not is there a possibility in. they've got little, you know, a couple of dead alien bodies? Hey, I watched the possibility. Day, maybe. You know, I wouldn't put anything past our government. Wink, wink. Um, so, yeah. Uh, if the government is watching, just remember he said that. <laughs> hey, if the government's watching, do something to this YouTube algorithm so that I can get this out to more people before you punish me. No, they're they're shutting it down now. I know. Watch they don't want the truth to come out. Watch my internet mess up. And if it does, and this show ends, I'm going to end this episode with the X-Files song. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so check it out. Um, the next topic I want to get to, there's this thing called planned obsolescence. Uh, are you familiar with that term? Never heard of it. Okay, what planned obsolescence is, as far as uh, this lawsuits and everything that's going against the uh, cell companies, and let me see if I can go ahead and just pull up the, uh, it's called planned obsolescence, the dark side of uh, cellular technology. What it is, is I don't know what kind of phone do you have? I have an Apple. Okay, so Apple. you're familiar with the glorious almost two, three times a year updates, if not more. Yeah. What this is, is any piece of technology in this context, smartphones, for example, can live forever. Um, what happens is when they do updates, some of these companies, not saying Apple's one of them, but Apple's probably one of them. They put a patch in so that older models intentionally slow down or don't work properly forcing you to upgrade so that's what this is planned obsolescence they want to make your phone obsolete um and it says here currently the materials and processes are advanced enough to produce good quality devices the smartphones we own today possess the ability to last for at least three years or even more but with planned obsolescence, um, 
the devices in commercial in the commercial compute consumer excuse me for our english speaking audience consumer market are planned to fail before their realistic lifespan and before i start bashing on the cell phone companies it is like that in other items as well because they can make a longer lasting better performing car automakers choose not to do that they go with cheaper uh, parts and things that aren't intended to last as long as possible. Because if you really think about it, it can be done. And it might be a higher priced automobile, but it can last a lot longer. So in their case, it's not a, a, a technical issue or a patch that they can put in to make it, uh, you know, get slow and old later. It's just natural wear and tear on things. And people that are like, well, you know, mechanical parts are constantly under stress. Yes, but depending on the types of steel you use, uh, aluminum, for example, I know that aluminum is used because it's lightweight and it's strong. Isn't titanium just as light and even stronger? So a longer lasting car is possible. Same thing with other components, TVs. But wouldn't titanium cost more? Yeah, yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You know, it might be it might be more, but it might be worth it if it lasts longer. But not so, everybody be able to buy it. Therein lies so, the problem. So that's why they go with the lesser expensive yeah, they go with product the cheaper components. Right. It's not the fact that they don't want to. It's they want to sell more cars to make more money. Obviously. Yeah, and and and, and that's where that greed comes in with the auto industry. But, you know, the example I was, the other Any example industry. I was bringing up, well, televisions, plastic is plastic. Does it have to be razor thin plastic for the chassis? Uh, the uh, picture, why, why are pictures so different on televisions? You know, some use better components than others. Shouldn't they all make one, one TV that's top of the line? Think about it. No. No, because then you would have McDonald's and Burger King and Wendy's all making the same cheeseburger. No, no, you're going to have differences in what you want to eat and everything, but do 27 inch. No, no, I mean the same type. They're going to make it the exact same way. You got Sony, all those guys, they're, they're going to make their TVs just a little different, going to make it just a little bit better. If I'm a Sony producer, I'm going to look at my competition and say, well, you know, their color is at this. I'm going to make ours this much better so people will buy ours instead of theirs. I mean, and I, I get that. You want your differences for your brand because uh, people like whatever your brand has. But just looking at, because you brought up Sony, for example, Sony, do they need to make five different versions of a 35-inch TV? Yes. Okay, what would be the uh, advantage of that then instead of making to make money? money. <laughs> <laughs> to so, make so what money. you're telling me is it comes back to greed. Well, yeah, everything business in America is all about greed, my friend. Name me one business that isn't greedy. And RJK I'll let you Productions. know they just went bankrupt. RJK Productions, and, and we're not bankrupt because we don't have any money at all. Right, but that's not a, you're not, you're not, per, you know, selling yeah, know. a product to a consumer, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, all money making businesses have to be greedy to make money. Nothing wrong with it. No, there's nothing wrong with it at all. But, you know, rounding back to the cell phones, I think that's kind of dirty to put the patch in the software update to make it obsolete. That's a theory, though. That's a theory. That's not a proven fact. That's true. And the only reason why I say that is because my wife, she's ran a, co a computer company for years. Windows always comes out with a better version of Windows. But before long, Windows can't run on an old computer. True. Very so true. You're, they're not doing, I mean. 11 now? Yeah, I, I don't know what we're on. I just know that. Like, I, I know, like, my uh, Internet Explorer, you can't get on it anymore. It, it doesn't even exist. Yeah. So, you know, that, the, 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 all the cell phones are nothing but a little handheld computer. So, 
we have to update our main computers. We have to update our phones. Now, do I put it past the phone services to do something like that? Of course not. Because again, greedy. I want to sell more iPhones. But I know I had an iPhone 4 till just two years ago, and then now I got the 11 or whatever. The second to the last one I got updated. So yeah. they do last a while if you take care of them. They do. I, now, I will say that because, my God, we rocked a 4, a 4S for years. And people would always ask, you, you don't want to get a new new phone? I'm like, well, I'll nope. use it until it wears sure out. Don't. Now, eventually it did wear out, and I ended up getting an SE simply because it matches this almost the same uh, size, which is what I was comfortable with because, you know, I didn't want to get a bigger phone. My theory was if I'm walking around with a bigger phone, I might as well put an iPad in my pocket. Um, and that SE is continuing to last us so and granted yep. it's, a, it's a se2 now, i know they're on the se3 now but yeah. you know if i like can I said, squeeze I, four years out of it i'll be happy you will you will as long as you don't you know throw it at somebody or run over it or some <laughs> shit like that God, I would hope but I, I mean like do i like i said going back to the actual question do i put it past the companies no is it a smart thing to do from a company perspective? No. Yeah, kind of. You think so? Okay, so you're you're owning the cell phone company and you want to sell more cell phones. You don't want the Richard Kearney's of the world to keep the same phone for eight years. I yeah, want you to I, buy I my new phone. I don't want to be dishonest about it either. It's not being dishonest. To, to make it's an update fail it's an update no different than a computer this new update's not going to work with the old stuff in the computer unless you update the phone oh, the no. insides of the phone I, I understand that not working because things are uh, technology is different i'm talking about putting the patch in to uh deliberately but see, i don't think that i don't necessarily think they're doing that i think they're just upping the information that this phone that whatever phone's able to receive and work with. You know, it's gonna need whatever program apps you use might need more megs, might mean mean more RAM or whatever. I mean, I don't know. I can see that. <clears throat> from a from a from a company, I mean, I don't really think they're doing now. If it comes to find out that's exactly what they're doing and they're doing it dishonestly, yeah, then I can see that point. But they're just throwing updates and people are pissed because their phones aren't working because they don't want to go buy a new one. And then they make up this thing. Oh, they're doing it on purpose to patch. You know, let's sue. You know, McDonald's gave me a cup of coffee and it was too hot. It's their fault, you know. Oh, I never will get over that. That was crazy. Type of thing. So, you know yeah, what? You, and I really do hope that you're right about that because I, I, would, I would hate that, that level of dishonesty in a company. I that's america that just about like every company's dishonest <laughs> that is also true so um until our government becomes honest oh shit i said it i my, now my computer's gonna fry up uh-huh see now we yeah we on a watch list somewhere <laughs> all right before we get the guys with suits knocking on our doors let's switch gears uh, we're gonna go to the <laughs> nfl um, did you see that article that I sent you? I, I did. I was looking at it. Uh, and I know I said 11 or 12 teams. It says here 14 teams, and I'll, I'll get to why I said 11. Uh, new uniforms slash and or helmets for the 2022 season. Realistically, what's new was really old. You know, um, the Atlanta Falcons, for example. They're going back to the red helmets and uh, they're taking off all the stripes and piping on their jerseys so that they look like they did in the 80s and 90s. So basically, they're just going back to that. Same thing with the Patriots. They're going back to, uh, they're taking Elvis off the helmet and putting Paul Revere back on there. Or as they call it, touchdown pat or whatever they call it, pat Patriot. Yep. Um, the newer 
looking ones. Uh, the Washington Commanders, still can't get over that name. They've kind of changed theirs up a lot more. Um, it still reminds me a lot of the old red skin colors, the color scheme, but uh, they've got a uh, thicker stripe, plainer uh, lettering, and they've got the word mark on the side, and the helmet just has a W on it. The difference is their alternates are black with the yellow lettering. And for some strange reason, the W is not on the side of the helmet on their alternates. It's smack in the middle of the forehead. Don't know what their logic is. I thought it was on both. I know the numbers are on the side. Is it because the W is in the middle? I don't understand why they did that. Yeah, the numbers are on the side. Okay. Um. I mean, I, can't I really say. don't like. I really don't like that Chicago Bears one. Uh, funny you should mention that one because uh, I was going to that one next. Because the Cleveland Browns had to crack on them because they debuted the helmet, the all orange helmet, and I guess the uh, Browns management tweeted, "That looks familiar. Where'd you get that idea from?" <laughs> so when Cleveland cracks on you you know that you probably didn't make a good decision. And I like the Houston alternate. It's not bad. That that red? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It, it is it is different. I mean... The Bengals one sucks. Yeah, Tampa Bay is bringing Bengals. back... Yeah, Tampa Bay is going to bring back their old creamsicles. Yeah, and the Giants are bringing back their old uh, uniforms. It would be nice to see – I'd like to see Seattle in them old uniforms. That's nice, too. Yeah, now they're not cleared to debut theirs until next season. Got you. Um, because they turned in their stuff late to the NFL. The Seahawks and there's another team that don't get to turn their – don't get to wear theirs until next season. Who was it? Seahawks and – the Bucks. Oh yeah, the Bucks. They so depending on how long how long Tom Brady hangs in there, he may not even ever wear the cream sickle. Yeah, the only thing I see that's a little different on the Atlanta Falcons is that they're still gonna have a black jersey with the red helmet. They used to have the red jersey with the red helmet. Yeah, I remember the black ones. The black jerseys with the red helmet too. I think that was right around the time Deion Sanders played for him. But yeah, I think that was black his first was their year. Alternate. Yep. Well, I guess Philadelphia they're going to bring back their Kelly Greens in 2023. Yeah, which isn't too bad. I, I kind of like that. Um, Eagle, they feel that they're going to have a black helmet. That doesn't look too bad. The Saints one looks pretty good. I do like the Saints one. Um, I'm not particularly feeling the, um, where is it at? I like the Jets one, too. That's the one I'm not feeling, the Jets one. A black helmet with green letters? I like that. Well, all these that teams that nice. have decided to go black. Um, it's a flat black, too. Yeah. And who's the other one that went black? Oh, the Carolina Panthers. Arizona. Arizona. Oh, yeah, that's right. They are doing it, too. So... Everybody, everybody's alternate color, they just automatically go with black. Man, you put, you put, you make that Giants helmet, if you made it red, man, they'd almost look like the Buffalo Bills. That's probably why they wouldn't do that. You don't, you don't want to be, you don't want to be in the same state. And, um, why? They got the old Buffalo Bills defensive coordinators or head coach. That's why I said that. <laughs> Well, you never know. He might be trying. And I know they listed theirs as a throwback, but technically not with the white pants. It would have to be gray pants for the Giants to have a true throwback. Yeah. Uh, what do I know? I like – I like the, – the, I don't like the Chicago one. I don't like Cincinnati. I don't really like Dallas's. Well, Dallas – they had been wearing it for a while before the helmet rule came into effect and then they couldn't and now it's coming back. That's just their Thanksgiving gigs that they're going to be wearing with the white helmet. I, the, blue star. the Carolina Panthers, 
I mean, yeah, it's all right, I guess. I mean, technically, take it or leave I it. I like all of them. I could, I could care less because I really like that Saints one. It is the best out of all of them, but I don't know. I think uh, find the Saints and the Jets, those are my favorites. I agree with you on the Saints. I, I disagree with the Jets. I just, I think it's that, a, they got that stealth black, man. It's just, it just pops with that green. It just looks really good. I just think it's a cop out. Hey, we need an alternate. Let's go with black. Versus what color? They've already done the white. They've already done the all green. Want to change them the whole color to a whole new color scheme? Can't do that. Uh, I guess you can't since they've only got the one color. But so I don't know. All right, let's get out of sports. But it doesn't matter. Do, all those teams are gonna suck anyway. So we that's what I was getting ready to say. Great minds <laughs> thinking like. <laughs> Hey, real quick reminder. What I would like to see is like the Chiefs do some alternate stuff with their helmet. Like I've seen some cool. Uh, I've seen some renderings. They, they would yeah, some good. night, you know, some what ifs. Like they had a yellow helmet, which was kind of cool looking. They had a black one with red letters. Uh, what black again? That's not in your team colors. You got. They had you a got white red one. And yellow. Use, well, use black yellow. isn't in the Jets colors either. But exactly. black is. Black is a uniform background color. Look behind you. Every one of those things on your behind you all has black in them. Oh, I got no rebuttal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see the Chiefs do something different to be an alternate. Just just for one game or something. I, would, I, mean, I, I, know would, I would like both of our squads to do that, but I know that we won't because the NFL told us no for several years. Uh, I don't know if you ever seen it. Nike uh, put Carr in an all-black, black pants, black jersey, and it had that, that matted uh, numbers, or, or no, the shiny black numbers with the matte black jersey, and we had the black helmet. Uh, the NFL Ooh, said no. An all because, black helmet? Yes. The NFL ah. said no because we they wouldn't be able to see um, who's who for the commentators very well. And I'm like, so if they change the color to silver, but on the letters, that, that, they'd have been that, able. That, they would have been able to see it. But then that's that's our regular black jerseys right there. No, nah, not, not if you don't put any outline with it. Oh, you mean just black numbers with a silver outline? Uh, I had to turn around and look at a picture of the Raiders I got on, on my wall here. Yeah, I guess they don't really have an outline on the numbers. No, nah, no, nah, just on their uh, road jerseys. Black numbers with a silver outline. Well, just leave it with the silver pants and put on the black helmet. That would be kind of tight. I'd probably, I, I might even root for them if they weren't playing the Chiefs that game. <laughs> Let me send the memo out to Mark Davis then. <clears throat> now, since we're on the Royals, I'm going to change the subject. I mean, the, the Raiders, I'm going to change the subject just a second before we move on. You cannot, did you see that deal about uh, Devontae Adams when asked about playing with Carr versus Aaron yeah, Rodgers. And, and I saw and the press conference, too. He clarified it, you know, the uh, next Where he day. said that, you know, it's playing One with two Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Yeah. yeah. That slip of the tongue there. Oh, okay. He didn't mean that. But we're, we're just going to play that off and move on? We're just going to play that I off. I see our time's move. running low, so we want to get to the other <laughs> two. But... Um, yeah. Yeah, so um, – I saw this thing, 25 songs that are synonymous with summer. And without going through them all, is there any particular one, any particular summer song that uh, you just love to hear every summer? It, it, it either rings in the summer or it makes you think about, you know, good times or anything like that? No, not a particular song. Really? No. I have always been... Uh, partial to uh jazzy jeff and the fresh prince uh 
you notice I didn't say Will Smith, but Jazzy Jeff from the Fresh Prince, Summertime. Summertime. I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, but do I, do I like think of the summertime when I, maybe for about a nanosecond, but I mean, it doesn't like I kick guess off it's, my season. It's because, of his, because of his rap in that. I, I I identify with that, and I think about all those things too because we did them when we were younger. Oh no, so. I identify all with that as well. But I just it doesn't. I mean, I guess maybe I'm just misunderstanding the question. Just, just something that you think about, not necessarily a favorite song, but uh, one that just makes you think of good times or happy times. Something that's you know synonymous with the summer. I mean, but the but term favorite, I don't really have a favorite. Does that song make me think of summertime? Yeah. But it's not my favorite. Does yeah. that make sense? That makes sense. I can see that. Um, closing it out, though, let's talk about some favorite new trailers that have uh, dropped. Have you seen the She-Hulk trailer number two or the John? I have Hulk seen teaser? the She-Hulk. Yep, I have. So. Let's start with She-Hulk. What do you think about that? Mm, I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Oh, so it's it's just, just middle of the road. It's I. Okay. Uh, are you going to be watching the show when it drops? Oh, out? yes. Without a doubt, yes. With my popcorn bag open and everything. Oh, there you go. Um, you know, probably in true Disney form, it'll probably only be six episodes, and they'll drop the first two on the first day, so that will only leave you four weeks after that. <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably wait till they all six drop and then watch them back to back. That's the only show I haven't done that with was Obi Wan because I just had to see it. I couldn't wait, you know. Well, since you brought up Obi Wan, I'll get to John Wick in a second. What did you, have you seen before? I ask you, what do you think about? It? Have you seen the Kai Patterson cut? Kai Patterson cut. Yeah, he's a Star Wars fan who also makes movies. He recut the movie. He recut the episodes so that it's a two and a half hour movie. Where do you see that at? Go to his website, kaipatterson.com, K-A-I Patterson.com. You, you'll see it. It's on his website. I'll have to, I'll have it's, to check it's that a out. Beautiful cut. He not only cuts out a lot of the stuff that makes it drag just so that you can stretch it out to make six episodes, he ties it all in and he reshuffles some things so that it makes a lot more sense. And it feels so much more like a movie. And, and, and things things make sense too. Uh, Kai good, Patterson, I'm writing that down. Yeah, a good example is when Obi-Wan was getting drugged through that fire and old girl helped him get out of there and she blew up that thing to uh, create some more fire in front of Vader. A lot of people were like, well, why didn't Vader just put out the fire and go after him? And it left you wondering that that was a misstep. He had a stormtrooper ask him, should we go after him? And he and Vader, he dubbed Vader in saying, no, let him go for now. He wanted him to suffer or something like that. And I'm like, okay, that makes more sense. Instead of him just letting him go and walking away. You waited this long oh. to get him. You had him. So, you know, things like that. And then there are things like um, when Leia got captured and they were running after her like Keystone cops uh, falling down. They cut all that out. They just went from them jumping in front of her to putting the bag over her head. Got it. It made more sense. It was more believable. Just things like that. So if you get a chance, go to kaipatterson.com and, and watch the uh, two and a half hour cut. And now we go to John Wick. This is one I'm waiting for. I haven't seen it. Okay. I won't give anything away. It's just a teaser. It's only like a minute. But... Uh, yeah, John Wick is back. Can you buy buy us five more minutes in, in this uh, podcast here? And I'll take a look real quick. <laughs> uh, well, we got three minutes, but. <laughs> I'll give you my, I'll, I'll tell you next week what I think about it. All right. Now, before we go, since we're on the subject of next week, next week, we're making our preseason picks. Before we see a game? Just, we're, we're going to do it twice. We're okay. going to do it before preseason, and then we're going to do the preseason. We're going to do the uh, remix, is what I'll call it, during that final week of the preseason. Because by then, we'll see what all these teams are about right before the regular season starts. So we'll be able to see 
where we're making changes, what teams that we thought were going to be good will suck and vice versa. That way we don't just leave ourselves to hang out there. Um, we can actually, you know, change up some things and make it a lot tighter during the regular season. Okay. Unless, unless things go horribly wrong with those picks. So it's just something to look forward to. Sounds like a plan. <clears throat> All right, my brother, we are going to call it then. And uh, All right. as usual, nice having you on board. Good conversation, good topics. Uh, let's hope that the uh, public agrees too. And let's hope like that, it. Uh, yeah, like, share, subscribe. And if y'all don't hear from us this week, somebody from the government <laughs> then came. I better stop saying that before something happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, show. Thanks for coming on, man. All right. We'll see you next week. All right. Everybody take care. Stay positive. Stay blessed.